which takes us to Pan. Pan is the god of woods and pastures, mountain peaks and landscapes, the god of wild nature. Pan is equally the god of pastoral lust. Pan has a goat's feet and two horns and wears a lynx pelt. His appearance at birth so terrified his nurse that she fled. Thus, irrational terrors come from Pan. Ick. Pan once battled Apollo in music, his Pan pipes against Apollo's lyre. And while the judge, Tomolus, awarded the prize to Pan, King Midas believed, oh, sorry, to Apollo, King Midas believed Pan's music, his wild music, was the more authentic. The music touches on how Pan got his pipes. Chasing the nymph Syrinx to the banks of the river Laden in Arcadia, Pan's pursuit terrifies her. To escape him, Syrinx calls on the river nymphs to change her form, and instead of a fair nymph's body, Pan found himself clutching some marsh reeds. The tender canes were shaken by the wind and breathed a mournful air unheard before. Efficice sonum tenuum similemque querenti, arte nova vocisque, Deum, dolce dine captum. And thus, when Pan blows on his pipes made from Syrinx's form, we have the music of nature. This converse at least shall I have with you. And thus our first encounter of commerce, commerce with nature and commerce with each other, business commerce, social commerce, sexual commerce. Pan, signifying the limitless potential of the human spirit, creativity, regeneration, endeavor, and perhaps the first and most optimistic part of an economic cycle. Yet these bubbles will be blown apart and die. Gods can never experience the second greatest transform transformation of all. Gods cannot die. And yet since classical times, the death of Pan has been rumored. Elizabeth Barrett Browning wrote in despair over 150 years ago of the disappearance of Pan's world. Pan, Pan is dead, Oscar Wilde lamented too. O goatfoot god of Arcady, this modern world is gray and old, and what remains to us of thee? So our first scale change is an ah of nature, from low to high, from tiny flower to dramatic landscape. Just a rumor that Pan lives gives us hope. The cliff face of Timolus watches half the Mediterranean. It falls away to Sardis on one side 
and on the other to the village of High Piper. Pan lives in a high cave on that cliff. He was amusing himself, showing off to the nymphs, thrilling them out of their airy bodies with the wild airs he breathed through the reeds of his flute. Their ecstasies flattered him. Their words, their exclamations flattered him. But the flattered became fools, and when he assured them that Apollo, no less, stole his tunes and rearranged his rhythms, it was a shock for Pan to find himself staring at the great god hanging there in the air of the cave mouth. Half eclipsed with black rage, half beaming with a friendly challenge. To Molos, the mountain, suggested the god, can judge us. After the contest, Pan was humbled. Yes, he agreed, Apollo was the master. Timolus was correct. The nymphs gazed at Apollo. They agreed. But then, a petulant voice, a hard, angled, indignant, differing voice came from behind a rock. Midas stood up. The judgment, he cried, is ignorant, stupid, and merely favors power. Apollo's efforts are nothing but interior decoration by artificial light for the chic, for the effete. Pan is the real thing, the true voice of the subatomic. <laughs>